Hi, this is Majana. If you are enjoying Fun Astrology, would you please go on iTunes and give Thomas a five-star review and just jot down a couple of sentences in a review. That really helps get the word out. Thanks. Well, we're going to start off the Saturday edition of the Fun Astrology Podcast with some good news. Can you handle that? And it's not so much what's going on out there today, although... You know, at least we've gotten a little bit of reprieve from the eclipse energy and everything that's happened this week. If you made it through the week, you know, you get the tail end of the applause. Good for you because it was a tough week, no doubt. But I decided to take a look ahead because a lot of people have been asking, when is all of this over? When are we going to get a break? So I wanted to just give you a little hint and something to look forward to, okay? I thought this would be kind of fun. Okay, so the first day you get to mark down is Monday. That's right. Actually, Monday, while some of you are asleep, it will be at 10.20 p.m. Eastern Time. The sun is going to move from Cancer into Leo. Now, Mars is already there, but the sun moves in and begins the Leo season. So, yes, all of you Leo babies... Well, we get to experience your moment in the sun, right? So that's going to be great as the sun moves, transitions from Cancer to Leo. The next day that you get to mark on your calendar of transitional events, and this gets good, it gets even better. I'm just setting the stage, so stay with me here. It gets better. Venus moves into Leo on Saturday the 27th, again, overnight. While you're out frolicking around at about 9.20 p.m. Eastern Time, Venus is going to tip into the fire sign of Leo for its summer ride. And then the third one you get to celebrate, once it turns direct from its retrograde, is the sports car of the, of the bunch. Mercury tips in on Sunday, August 11th. Now, we, when we've done these look-aheads, I've said mid-August. Well, there it kind of is. But here's the real reason why we are talking about some major applause in August, okay? I want you to think of a piece of pie, all right? Let's cut the pie into 12 pieces. I'm thinking of either a cherry pie or a pumpkin pie. I don't think it really matters for this analogy, but you could Google that. (laughs) Hey, let's be silly on the weekends, okay? Lighten up. All right, so think of a pie. Think of your favorite pie. Cut it into 12 pieces, okay? Those are the 12 houses. Now, they rotate around and change about every, let's say, two hours. It's two point something, but they change every two hours. So they're in constant motion, Earth's rotation. So we're just going to take a random sample of, you know, snapshot of when we're doing this little example. And let's just put Leo up at the top of the chart, okay? So it's up at the 12 o'clock position. And now, by August 11th, in Leo is Mars, the Sun, Cancer, and Mercury. Gee, does that sound familiar? (laughs) It's what we just dealt with in Cancer, right? Okay, so now the party just changes in from water to fire and from emotion driven by the moon to the summer season, Leo, shining by the sun, whole different energy. But, and this is a big one, Once they get in there, and because they're all pretty quick moving, right, we are going to have a favorable aspect as they cross over Jupiter. Where is Jupiter? Roughly, let's put it at about the 8 o'clock position. Now, this is really crude. You full-time, like, big-time astrologers are going to be going, this guy is crazy. Look, I'm just trying to create a visual for people who don't understand astrology that well, and this gets confusing, right? So, again, fun astrology. We play light here. So we've got the pie. Up at the top is the big party. Down at about 8 o'clock is sitting there a little guy who has been in retrograde who is going to turn direct actually on the same day that Mercury moves back in. This is really cool. So Mercury moves back into Leo, Jupiter turns direct. And all of that happens on Sunday, August 11th. So we only have a few to go, you guys. If I only had a yacht. Remember I was saying that earlier, right? I would take the last half of July and just go cruise out there where there is nothingness. 
And then Majana said, yeah, but your boat would turn over. <laughs> it's like, oh, my gosh, she's probably right, because this has been some crazy stuff. But we get to look forward to all of this. And then all of those planets that are up there at 12 o'clock, as they start to move, and remember, I mean, they're, they're fast, right? The sun, Venus, Mercury, they're all pretty quick. I mean, they've got some, they've got some uh, turbo in their engines. So they move on, and when they hit about seven degrees of Leo, they are coming within aspect range of Jupiter. And what kind of aspect is it? It is a big, fat trine. You know how we talk about angles, sacred geometry, and how all of astrology is just nothing but symmetric angles in the universe that come down to Earth and help orchestrate our lives? It's just so cool. So a trine is 120 degrees. So as we've done our little pie, right, 90 degrees would be 9 p.m., just go down 30 more degrees, there's Jupiter sitting there ready for all of these guys to cross over. That is going to be some major relief because you're going to pass basically the Sun, Venus, and uh, Mercury are going to pass over. Mars is there right now. So if you want to, but see, Jupiter's in retrograde. So that's like a different twist on it. But if you are ready for some major stuff, that would be you, the sun, your love life, Venus, and communication, Mercury, education, learning, traveling, here and there, is all going to get great. Because Jupiter, Jupiter will be like a bear coming out of hibernation. Been in retrograde for a couple of months. Oh, yeah. Coming out, Venus trine. What does a bear do when it comes out of hibernation? It yawns, looks around, finds some berries to eat, and then it just wants to have sex. The date? August 11. I will see you there. <laughs> Have a great weekend.